Don't kill unto others. Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, I'm afraid. And I'm Mark. <laughs> you better be afraid. You will be afraid. This oh, is yeah. Church is Lame, the podcast where we try to fix the church by talking about the stupid things churches do that break the entire body. <laughs> All right, Scott. So um, I feel like you may have found something this past week. Yeah. So I did find some stuff. And actually, it's not funny. It's kind of sad. But... I well, think it makes I think it makes the point here. Um, California pastor arrested for attempted murder after allegedly shooting his son-in-law. How about so that for what? headline? Yeah. So in this case, uh, son-in-law also happens to be a lawman, right? So kind oh. of a du- double whammy on that one. Yeah, this one just keeps getting better. Yeah. And so here's one of my big frustrations of the stories this week is we had some good headlines, but mm-hmm. the authors of the stories did not flesh out the details very well. And so there's a yeah. lot of murkiness into the actual facts of the matter, right? But we have Gordon Muller here, who is one of the co-founders of Believers Victory International Church. Why do so many prosperity churches have the word victory in there? Why is that such an important word? (laughs) And why is it so important to be international? Like, we have viewers all over the world. It's like, yeah, but your church is in California. Like, like grow where you're planted, man. Yeah, like that one, like, Faith World Overcomers. It's like, I know everything I need to know about you just based on the fact that you have the word, the words World Overcomers in your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Like I said, not all the facts are spelled out well, but from what I yeah. can gather, his daughter and her husband are having a marital dispute of some kind, and the daughter and her son are living with mom and dad, Pastor Muller. Okay. And and uh, the sheriff, the son-in-law, comes over, and uh, arguments ensue, and shots get fired, um, with uh, Pastor Muller then claiming he, he was, he was going to kill me, he's attacking me, or something like that. Right. Okay. Um, he did not try to run. He did not try to run from the police or anything like that. But we have the, I have this saying, dramatic people tend to have a lot of drama in their life. <laughs> right. <laughs> Things like this. Most reasonable people can figure out a way to avoid these kind of things. Like, hey, when your son in law is coming over and you're pretty sure an argument's going to going to be a result. Keep your guns locked away. You know? Yeah. Don't, you know, don't, or, <laughs> don't let him in the house. Or things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I understand here. There's a gray area, right? He's, he's, I think he's a sheriff. He's a Los Angeles County sheriff, right? So on the one hand, he's not allowed to open, he can come into the house without probable cause or warrant like that, right? Mm-hmm. But he is family. So, like, but either way, it's your house and you don't have to let in anybody you don't want to let in, right? Yeah, so I mean, like you'd expect a pastor to kind of be, you know, doubly cautious about that kind of thing. Yes, as well, you'd expect the pastor to be a man of peace, yes. a man of humility, a man who believes in things like redemption, who believes in things like reconciliation. I I wonder what it says about the state of our pastorship that the 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 weapon is how we end disputes, even in the church world. Yeah, you know, and they're, they're like you said, the other, the details are mercury. Yeah. Mercury. Mm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the details are murky. Yes, please. Thank um, you. Yeah, you know, I, I am a professional after all. <laughs> not a professional talker, clearly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like there's details we might not know about the situation, and you know, maybe, maybe, you know, the, like the pastor was warranted, you know, busting out his side piece and uh, taking some shots, but we don't know that. What we know is just this, this little bit, and you know, I'm like 100%. I'm like, you know, if a pastor is incapable of talking a situation like that down, I, I feel like you know. His first call, his, his first thing should have been like maybe to call like the local police, yeah, you know, for his city, and you know, like that should have been there. So it's like, I mean, I'm really curious as to like what led to that because I just I cannot imagine 
how a pastor can justify using lethal force yeah. to resolve anything but like an act of like home invasion. Right. To, Even to, that, like, it makes me feel icky. Right. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, I don't know about you. I don't think you and I have talked about this in depth. I do not come like rushing to the defense of law enforcement. Like, no. I think there's there's more than ample evidence that there are plenty of bad cops out there and that cops should have to prove themselves and and a situation, any situation they're in as you know, they should have to prove themselves having acted well. You know, and I think I'm all for body cams and anything that that, you know, helps to keep uh, cops accountable. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's not like I'm just like, well, he was wrong to shoot the to cop. The cop was in the right. You know, maybe the cop wasn't in the right. But I think your point is far more pertinent that, yeah, like short of an active shooter, like a man of God should not be a, a necessarily be a man of the gun right away. You know? Yeah, and, and I'm wondering if, like, more details are going to come out, they're going to clarify this, but, you yeah. know, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, it's frightening. It's, it's, it's not that it's something I can say, like, this is, like, this is breaking the church, but it might be pointing to an injury that needs our attention. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so here's the thing, that, like, this pastor, nobody knows who this pastor is in the world, right? Gordon Muller, his name yeah. is not, like, he's not on CBN, he's not on Moody Bible, a radio, you know, he's not on Air One or or any of the popular Christian radio broadcasting. Nobody knows who this guy is. Nobody really believes, you know, nobody really knows who Believers Victory International Church is. So here you have this this tiny church that is like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy would call this church mostly harmless, right? <laughs> nobody knows them. Nobody knows what they do. And here they are making international news over over something that should never have happened, you know? And this mm -hmm. is the kind, like, this really is, this really does speak to our mission statement. Like, stupid things that churches and church leaders do that just kind of break everything, right? Like, who in the world now, like, if you're in California and, and, and you're looking for a church, is there any chance you're going to Gordon Muller's church? Probably not. You know, or if you're in California and you're thinking about going to church, are you going to any church knowing that the pastors are packing in this day and age? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, my answer is like, and even though like I'm not like a you know you know anti gun person in the slightest, you know, right? I'm, you know, I I know how to handle a weapon, and I'm a good shot. Right. That being said, I don't think anybody should ever walk into a church with a gun. Right. You know, a gun is an implement of war. It's an implement of death. Right. Um, whether if, whether it's an implement of death for a person or a varmint is irrelevant. It's an implement of death. Right. So to go into a sacred space with that to me is disgusting. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, by all means, you know, if you want to have a gun in your trunk or your car, go for it. You know, yeah. if you want to go out target shooting or hunting after church, go for it. But like, yeah, just treat the sacred space of God as a sacred space of God. Yeah. That, that gets to be an interesting, uh, interesting. That's, I think it's a whole nother conversation, right? Mm -hmm. When you like, like we live in the day and age of active shooter drills, right? So, you know, churches are going to, they're going to have security and, and security are going to be armed. And that's just the modern reality of the modern church in America. And it's a sad state of affairs. Um, but I don't think that's, that's the point of this conversation yeah, um, yeah. today, you know, but yeah, I just, um, if you're a pastor, don't shoot people, you know, yeah, um, try you're, the, you're, you're the guy who said that you're willing to lay down your life for others, you know, and, 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 um, if you're not really willing to, um, maybe don't become a pastor. Right. You know, like Jesus said, it's like, you know, a greater friend has no one than this than one who will lay down their life for their friends. Right. You know, not one who will take a life for their friends. One right. who will lay down their life. I think that's an important distinction. Right. And let's remember, this wasn't your friend. This is your son. Like son-in-law is still mm -hmm. your son. Right. Yeah. And, and so that, that this was, um, this was the conclusion of the situation is the situation going wrong so many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on. All right. All right. So let's go from the heartbreaking to the comically ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you are a child of the seventies and eighties, such as myself, um, you no doubt uh, watched a show about a bunch of yuppies called full house and their kids. And oh you, my, I'm and, afraid where this is going. And you gloried 
when the show returned to Netflix in the form of Fuller House. One of the stars of that show is outspoken Christian Candace Cameron Burr. Burr, Burr, not sure, but she's uh, she's enjoyed her resurgence in celebrity, and it's great. You know, fifteen minutes of fame, enjoy it mm-hmm. to the max. One of the things that she's done is um, she wears her Christianity on her sleeve, which is fine, totally fine. But here's the deal: you gotta walk the walk if you gotta talk to talk, right? And we live in the information age. So if you did something unchrist like 10 years ago, it's going to come back. It's going to find its way. And yeah. so in, in recent in recent days, a video has she, – she posted a video on social media of her um, dancing and Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA playing in the background. And, okay. um, you know, not to be – lots of people like Born in the USA – but ultimately, it's not a song about enjoying our freedom or, or like being patriotic and uh, rah rah America. Ultimately, it's a song that that really kind of takes America uh, to task for its poor treatment of, of Vietnam veterans. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and uh, some famous rock star or something um, took her to task. Through social media. It's funny that, like, we have all these spats, like, in social media now, you know? Uh, let's see here. Like, Matthew Coma, uh, indie rocker. So m- maybe not even a rock star. Okay. Indie rocker Matthew Coma uh, posted a video in response, kind of taking her to task over that. And then another artist, Jojo Siwa, uh, she's the one that really got this wave kicked off, this this anti Candace wave calling her out for being one of the rudest celebrities she's ever met. <laughs> Apparently what happened is once again, like a decade ago, um, she wanted to have her picture taken with Candace and Candace said, no, it was like a red carpet kind of thing. Right. And Candace mm-hmm. said no, but then went on to take pictures of, with other people. Weird. Right? Yeah. So this is not like an important story. In the, in the scheme of things, right? This is not the war in Ukraine. This is not anything of that nature. But this is yet another example of dumb things Christians do. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, it really points to the importance of when we are Christians and we are out in the world and we are interacting with the world, um, especially, you know, when you're doing it on this, like your phone or whatever, you know, like you have like this very much online life. Yeah, that gets recorded, and you need to be very careful about what you put up there. Yeah, um, especially you know if you're like an actor in a popular TV show. You know, it's like, yeah, like you really have to 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 make sure that you're you're like strengthening yourself against like criticism, and just be smart about it. Because let's face it, there are people out there, and I'm not saying everybody's like this, but there is a a small contingent of people out there who are looking for any excuse. To come down hard on Christians acting like buttheads. Right. Present company, not accepted. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's our old podcast. Right. And it's funny because, like, once again, if she wouldn't wear have worn her Christianity on her sleeve and kind of made such a big deal mm-hmm. um, about it, like, none of this would, would have happened. Right. Yeah. But then in the aftermath of this, you and I kind of default to a position of a healthy Christian outlook on criticism is probably introspection, right? Like that's probably a yeah. good reaction is introspection with some humility, something along that lines, right? She, once again, she gets up on social media and she does this kind of verse of the day uh, from Isaiah, the Lord is my defender, right? Kind of like this passive aggressive version of, well, I don't care what you say. Like I've got God kind of thing. Like got milk, I've got God. Like it's like uh, it's like Twitter Twitter theology, Ugh. Right. you know, right. like theology in 140 characters. It's like yeah, really, you know, my my question being, you know, the guy with the you know, the green exegesis. Like if I if I go through Isaiah 12 too, like how badly I'm going to tell you that you took it out of context? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so how does this break the church? I'm not sure that it breaks the church, except that it reminds people that that Christians are not just hypocrites, but are the biggest hypocrites, right? Because not only yeah, were yeah. you a terrible person 10 years ago, 
but like in the way you respond to things, you're still kind of terrible. Yeah, it's like we need to be bigger than the criticism we receive. Yeah. And of course, like you said, that needs to be like with introspection, like, you know, uh, just kind of like error on the side of like criticism is actually in good faith. Yeah. And you'll do well because you're not going to react rationally. You know, you're, you're going to be like, OK, well, let me take a look at that. And if you're yeah. like, well, you know, I, I disagree with that. Right. And you disagree with it. But at least you took it seriously and you treated it seriously, because I think too much of the church does not take people in good faith. Yeah. And there's a lot of bad faith actors out there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, if you're if your starting place is that people are not acting in good faith, it kind of makes you a jerk to other people. Right. And I, I think the mistake Candace made here is I think she failed to remember that for the most part, celebrities are jerks. Right. They live in this bubble where everybody <laughs> yeah, gets yeah. them anything they want on a whim. Mm -hmm. uh, you want you want us to tell you look good, even though you don't look good. We'll tell you you look good. Uh, you need some cocaine? We'll get you some cocaine. Uh, you need tickets to the Lakers game? We'll get you that. You're awesome. You're star-spangled awesome as long as you're Not making us that money. we're suggesting that Candace you know? is a Lakers fan. Just right. want to say that. <laughs> right. Right. But it's not It's not an impossible stretch to imagine that celebrities are, are, mm -hmm. are difficult. Right? So, like, as somebody who advertises their Christianity to such a an extent— Maybe the better response would have been, hey, I'm not sure what this is about. Like, I'm not sure why I'm getting this blowback. Um, but whatever it is, I'm sorry, and and let's talk about it. Like, that would have been a better yeah. response, you know? And it wouldn't have been her, like, like admitting to whatever. It just would have been saying, like, like, hey, I'm human, and maybe I did make a mistake. Can somebody fill me in, you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, um, like, as I mean, you've said multiple times, you know, wearing our Christianity on her sleeve. Yeah. and. You know, there's there's a degree to which right, I, I look up to people that can do that. Because, like, mm -hmm. I'm not that person. Like, it's like, like I would hope that, you know, if it becomes relevant, I, I, I like, I'll talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to, like, make, you know, other people, like, you know, wait while I pray for my food or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, I don't go out of my way to, like, broadcast the world that I'm a Christian because I don't think that's, you know, ultimately we're supposed to just you know, love people, right? You know, yeah. It is a mission of the church overall to go out and, you know, make disciples. But it's like, it's not my job to like go out and broadcast how, how like I, that I'm a Christian. It's me to go out there and just be one. Right. So it's right. like, you know, I, I don't know, just like be careful when you, cause like the more you wear your faith in your sleeve, the more your screw ups will draw attention to you. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and like you said, like we are all to some degree or another hypocrites Mm -hmm. And that and that sucks, but like that's just kind of the reality. You're like we are not perfect people. Any yeah. Christian who thinks that they are beyond sin <laughs> is deeply lying to themselves. Yeah, you know, just because that we are, you know, no longer slaves to sin, as Scripture puts it, right, does not mean that we are free from making selfish, bad, dumb, sinful moves. Yeah, you know, from time to time. And let's face it, if you're doing 99 things right and you do that one thing wrong. People are going to stick to that one thing you did wrong much more than the 90, th 90 things you did right. Yeah. Now, let me say this. I, I do want to agree with indie rocker um, Matthew Coma. Like, I do agree with him that I really do wish people would listen to the lyrics of songs more closely. Oh, for sure. Like, how many people have gotten married to um, Every Step You Take by the police? Oh, my. Yeah, that's just—or, just, like, every uh, junior high dance— in like the eighties, like this is not a good song to start your marriage off with, right? But they no. just hear the, they just hear those few choice words and like, oh, this is awesome! It's got to be a part of our wedding. It's like really, 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 yeah. So yeah, or this or how, how, it's like it's like you should go through like every generation and be like, this is these are all the songs that you know I listened to as a kid that were about sex or masturbation. Yeah, because it's a frighteningly long list. Yeah. All right, so let's uh. Let's 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 wrap this up. I've got two more articles. I'm only going to choose one of them here. Um, right. You and I talk a lot about the United Methodist Church and the schism that's happening there. Um, we yeah, all the, we all know the that there's like insanity. there's what like 106 churches in Florida that are that are working on um, what are they calling it now? The Global Methodist Church. Um, yeah. Even though they can't really stay united with the Florida Methodist Church, but hey, if you want to go global, more power to you, brother. Yeah. But now a large Arkansas church votes to leave the UMC for the same reasons, right? 
Um, let's see here. First United Methodist Church of Jonesboro voted Sunday evening to leave the UMC with a reported 1,300 taking part in the vote and 69% voting in favor. So so what is that? A little bit more than two-thirds, um, which, which in most anybody that votes more than two-thirds is automatically a win, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The funny. So this is not the funny part. This is not the unexpected part. Like, there's nothing surprising about this. That yeah, there. No. That that there are churches now. Now that the wave is here. The wave is here. Like, yeah. The bandwagon has come. Like, we don't have to pretend to. We don't have to pretend to like gay people anymore. We don't have to pretend to put up with this uh, peace and love and acceptance thing. We don't have to pretend anymore. The wave is here, and we can just jump on the wave that says like we we don't want to have anything to do with gay people anymore, right? And this is just the latest Methodist church to jump on that wave. The funny part or the sad part, depending on how you look at it, is mm-hmm. in the statement made in a Facebook post on Sunday says we all pray for healing in our congregation. It's like, well, here's the deal. If you don't break things, things don't need to heal. You see how that works? Yeah, it's like the least self-reflective or self-aware <laughs> thing you can say. Yeah, talk about tone deaf. <laughs> yeah, like let there be healing for the thing we just did to like to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so once again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because I think it's fairly self-evident on how this breaks the church, right? Mm -hmm. You can't—you have to know as professional communicators of the gospel that words matter and that in something Mm -hmm. as as potentially as big as a church split, it's big to your congregation, is sure. It's certainly a big deal in the United Methodist Church right now. And because it's also happening um, parallel with the Southern Baptist Convention, the entire Christian world is looking very carefully at what's happening um, in, Mm -hmm. in, in, in these stories. And so these stories are not small stories, even though Christian news as a whole is a very small part of the news world, right? Everybody's paying close attention, and all you have to say for yourself after, after, like, tearing apart what God has put together, in a sense, is we pray for healing? Like, that that's the best you can do? That's it? Like, could you show any more how little you care is kind of where I'm at with this. Yeah, because I feel like if what you really wanted was healing, you wouldn't have, A, separated yourself from the UMC, and Hello? B, you would have, like, done work to try to bring healing to the UMC. Right. But you didn't. You, like, you... You took your ball and you went home. Yep. And that's, uh, to me, that's disgraceful. I mean, it's just, but then again, you know, like we you know, keep saying, you know, Christians are hypocrites a lot yeah. of the time. So, you know, there you go. You know, we have to own that. Right. Um, but it's sad, you know, because it's like, this is an issue over which like you and me do not think the church should be splitting, you know, but it, it is. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, the thing is for me, it's, it's, it's literally unfathomable. Like, literally, mm-hmm. I cannot wrap my mind around an organization that was created by Almighty God to bring a kingdom of love and make it real on this earth that we would accept the opposite as acceptable behavior, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like that, you know, the, you know, it's a statement. I, I forget what verse it is. It's Ecclesiastes. I think it's like right at the beginning. Like, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not just in Ecclesiastes. It's several places in the Old Testament. Right. Um. But like that fear, that word fear, right? Like, you know, like I don't want to get into it too much. I mean, there's the, you know, it doesn't mean to be afraid of, but it means to kind of realize that you should be afraid of the power that God can wield. Right. Right. But it's like, it's kind of like a reverential awe. That's like the sense that it it means to communicate. Right. Um, But I think too many Christians are so are, I think they're terrified of God. Like I think that I think so, I think a lot of Christians are are just afraid that 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 their salvation is going to get snatched away, uh, just at an instant if they do or say the wrong thing, um, or if they think the wrong thing. Very often it's like just about you know, do you believe the correct thing about this, you know? And that that's absurd. Uh, like you know, like doesn't God doesn't care if if we have the exact correct view of like what the end times are going to be like? Are we ready for the end times? You know, have we been spreading his kingdom of love yeah you know and 
I don't know. It just, it, it seems to me that we need to be better across the board at, you know, not being afraid of what God can do to us, but rather stand firm in what he has done for us, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, you know, whatever pronoun you want to use for God. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to start that whole argument here, but you know, let's face it, God, you know, other than Jesus doesn't really have a gender we can point to. Right. Yeah, so I'm not like I, I'm sure that by now our regular listeners know that I'm probably not what you would call a fundamentalist Christian, right? No, uh, but there are a lot of Christians who have some sort of picture in their mind of the next life, like standing at the gates and being held accountable for the for the life that you lived on this side of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how you explain this one away if if that's kind of like. If you kind of see a future where that's part of it, I don't know how you explain this away, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I like I could have been a peacemaker. I could have continued to fight for what I believe is right while staying in community with those that I love. But instead, I chose to abandon my denominational family. I chose to force a portion of our congregation to abandon their their denominational family against their will, you know? And so if we believe in some sort of reckoning, like this is going to be part of it, right? And you can have all of the defense that you want to have, and it doesn't change the fact that the methodology doesn't do anything, um, hurts your defense. Like your methodology mm -hmm. kills your defense, Right. Because for, sure. for whatever defense you have, you acted out in a lack of love and that lack of love like covers your your quote unquote right thinking. Yeah. And it's 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 not always about, you know, what we think sometimes it's about, you know, what we do with it. Exactly. And this is I think, you know, as I think you're right to point out that this is a case, you know, I shouldn't say a case. This is just an additional case of this and we're going to see more of this from the from the umc yeah you know but it's it's i think it's more telling that these are churches leaving the usc the umc yeah not the ufc <laughs> that would be awesome cage oh fight this pastor against this pastor in a cage fight to the death yeah who's your pastor mine's batista yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome oh that would be fantastic but you know what i'm trying to say it's like you know like it's it's not the greater umc that is disaffiliating American churches that are affirming. It's churches within the UMC just leaving the UMC. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. Like to, to me, that's a, that's a more telling thing. Right. Yeah. Like, and there's part of me that can't escape this kind of like I'm just a simple American, and because the the we're gonna join the global Methodist Church. The word "global" is in there, so we're global. Like, no, you're part of a hundred ish other churches in Florida. <laughs> like that's it yeah. like like uh, yeah we 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 parsed all that out last yeah 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 but, so. okay yep you're right you're right okay you yeah. are absolutely right let's move along um okay i want to offer up a mea culpa i hope i said that right um we had a we had an um, episode recently where we kind of talked about nigeria and um i had this inkling mm -hmm. that 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 something was amiss and I found this article, and um, we'll put the link to this in the show notes uh, for sure. So the headline is this. Uh, six EWCA pastors killed, 27 Christians kidnapped in Nigeria so far mm -hmm. this year. Okay, and this is on the Christian Post, and we'll link to it. And I think everybody has their own yardstick for what it means to be persecuted. Um, yeah. But certainly six murders and 27 kidnappings, I think, deserves consideration at the very least. So, sure, so this sure. is me and the us, uh, you know, saying, hey, you know, I, I feel confident in saying I think we got it wrong. And my apologies. And we will try to do better. Yeah. You know, because like we, you know, and this is not to, to justify you know, anything. Right. But it's like, you know, we we see this kind of a, a like an article. Right. Because you have so many Christians in this country that will claim persecution. Like there's mm -hmm. this persecution complex that a lot of Christians have. And so, you know, we see this kind of reaction to this, this situation in Nigeria and in Nigeria, I think we can say like, for sure, you know what? Yeah. There, there's some real actual persecution happening there. 
yeah. um, as there are in some other parts of the world, you know? So it's like, we, we definitely want to, to not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Disparage. Right. Uh, That's good. What's going on there. Or like, you know, or look down upon that, you know, um, that, that Christians are willing to suffer for mm-hmm. the faith is, is a long tradition in the church. Yep. Um, and we don't want them to have to. Um, but you know, I think, you know, we should look to these people and say, Hey, look, you know, they stood up for what they believed in and they, they suffered for it. Am I, am I ready and willing to do the same? Yeah, that's and good. I don't, I don't know if I can, I, I just honestly don't know if I could do that. That's right. Yeah. I'd like, like to think that I could if, if the situation happened. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So we always appreciate feedback and comments Our our online, um, this growing online community has been awesome. Um, we got an interesting comment in response to um, the episodes that we've done on Hillsong and okay. more, more specifically uh, Bobby and Brian Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to read the very, very last part of this comment. How am I supposed to partner with you in prayer when you've publicly humiliated people? Don't just comment once. Keep this conversation going and put on public display your answers to my question. So I've got two things, a little bit of tough love here. So two things, Mm -hmm. okay? First, so let's address the first part of this. How am I supposed to partner with you in prayer when you've publicly humiliated people? I've publicly humiliated nobody. Like, (laughs) Brian and Bobby Houston have humiliated themselves. Like, now we've offered commentary on it, and sure, like, we are sarcastic, we are snobby, we are dumb, we are goofy, whatever adjectives you want to use to describe this show, by all means. Have at it, right? Um, but one, we've humiliated nobody. We're just talking about it. And B, let me make sure I, I say this right. Yeah. I don't care if you partner with us in prayer. <laughs> okay? I, I think you have a fundamental misunderstanding of what this show is, right? Yeah, and we've church, never asked anybody to partner with us in prayer. Right. So church is lame. We are not a social media virtual prayer list. We are mm-hmm. not trying to start a church through YouTube. At its core, Church is Lame is a documentary where every week we document the stupid things churches do. And over time, we are making, we are building a mountain of evidence as to why the church is its own worst enemy in its fight to be credible, in its fight to be relevant, in its fight to be meaningful in the modern world. Right. And so that essentially yeah. is what church is lame is. We are not asking you to to come alongside us in that way, you know? And and so like you need to you need to zoom out and see the bigger picture, right? So Bobby and Brian Houston, if you believe that their va- their brand of prosperity gospel enriching themselves by stepping on the backs of the people who give money, if you think that's okay, then you're good. And if you don't think that's okay, then do something about it, right? But, yeah. like, if you're just going to kind of attack us because you don't like our style of not liking what they do, oh, well. Okay? Yeah. I mean, it's like we've we've never claimed to be anything but, like, you know, infotainment. Right. Um, and I think that's an important distinction to make, you know, is that, like, you know, we're not— we're not like a, this is not a ministry that we're doing. Um, exactly. Right. You know, but we hope to be able to minister to people and we have. Right. Um, you know, like outside of the, like our jabbering on about here, you know, we've received some emails from people. We've been able to communicate with people and that's been great. Right. Um, but like this, this criticism, I love this other part of this is like, you know, do you know them personally? And have you had a personal conversation with them? It's like, so if, if that's your standard of, of, whether what, what if it qualifies us to talk about their actions, then you just have said that the entire legal system of our country is insensible. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on to that thought for a second because that you're you're delving into the second part of this. Okay. Se- okay. The second part of this comment is: don't just comment once. Keep this conversation going and put on public display your answers to my questions. And yeah, you know, once again, I don't want you to confuse my answer. You ready? Sure. No. Here's the deal. This is YouTube, and it's a video um, medium, right? So if you want to have a long-term, a long-form conversation with us, make your video, post it on YouTube, link to our video, and if you have enough viewers that makes it worthwhile for us to respond, 
we will respond in long form. But there are just way too many comments and way too many people to respond to for, for you and I and Mark to go long form in the comment section. Not happening. Okay? Yeah. And, and plus, you know, it's comments. It's like it's called the comment section, not the discussion section. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not... Uh, maybe I am being pedantic, but I'm not meaning to be pedantic. Yeah, no, for um, sure. Like that's not what the comment section is for. It's not meant to, to like for us to have this back and forth. You know, email us if that's what you want. Like you, we can we can have a, a longer form interaction that way, or you can make a video like Scott. Yeah, no, make make a, a great... video. Like you need to understand that we are two guys who have full time jobs and who have families that require our time, and and so if you want us to like put a real time and real effort into a conversation then we're going to make the most of this medium, right? Mm -hmm. And so you make your video, and we'll make our video. And then we'll talk about how stupid it is, the idea that I have to know Adolf Hitler to know that the Holocaust was bad. That's just stupid. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, and like, I mean, I, I need to call you out for bringing up Hitler because, you know, just the reductio ad Hitlerum argument, just, it just it's just bad. But, you know, it is unfortunately a very apropos comparison to this particular to this particular argument it is right yeah yeah okay so anyway just like this person has we love interaction even we we love when people take good shots at us like that are clever and funny we love it like we'll, we'll give a thumbs up to that not a problem right mm -hmm. so if you want to comment with us we love it if you hit the subscribe button and the like button and the comments and the bells and the clicks and the clicks and the clicks and just click everything right if you search for us anywhere online, you're going to find us Church is Lame, right? You're going to find us on YouTube. You're going to find us on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. So we would love for your subscription. We'd love for you to just join us on a weekly basis. We are so grateful for you. Um, and it's like like Mark said, um, if you have something you want to get in, in, in front of our eyes urgently, by all means, email us, um, churcheslamepodcast at gmail.com. We may not respond in long form, but we will definitely see it right away. You know, mm -hmm. Mark and I, we'll talk about it with each other. You know, really quickly. Yeah, you know, and if we really need to bring in the big guns, you know, we'll give Rob Bell a call and we'll have him weigh in on it because you know nice. he's somebody that you know we look up to and we respect deeply. Yes, absolutely. He's a great peacemaker too, so he would he would figure out how to navigate this. Yeah, and he's probably a little bit less snarky than we are. But, you know. I don't know about that. Like he's like he's snarky, but he's his like you've got to be like it's subtle, like but it's there. Like you just have to like be able to see it. It's there. So it's like British snark. No, it's it's even like it's it's like <laughs> oh, I don't even know how to how to describe it, but it's it's like it it's between the lines. Yeah, it's definitely between the lines. Yeah, I think I probably put him up there with like Gore Vidal. Like hmm. Gore Vidal could get. I've seen him in a couple of, of interviews. He he can be snarky in such an amazingly yeah, amazingly poetic way. Like, yeah. you, like you, you have to like, you sit on it for a bit. And you're like, Oh my gosh. Uh, he's just a, yeah. Brilliant mind. Yep. I mean, awesome. Rob Bell, you know, not just. Right. The guy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Got to, got to save it. We want him on our podcast at some point. Faux <laughs> you know, shizzle. Can't, can't insult, you know, the potential future guests. Exactly. I hear you, man. Uh, all right. Well, if if you got nothing else to add, then I'll, I'll you know just say this. Uh, you know, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>